Next.js 13 was just released and with it came a bunch of new cool features. One of these was the introduction of app directory. With the app directory we can improve the routing in our Next.js applications and we can use easily things like server components or layouts for example. In this video I want to show you how you can use the new app folder and the new routing and how things like layouts and server components work. So let's dive in. So right here I have a fresh Next.js application open and as we can see it uses the Next.js 13 version. So let's start by opening up the application in our local host and just see that it runs. Looks like everything is okay so let's hop to the VS code and see the folder structure. So up until now every page has been defined inside of this pages folder. But with the Next.js 13 we can now create a new folder called app and we can place our pages inside of this folder. So let's try it out. So in the app folder I will just create a new file called page.js and inside of it I will export a react component like this then save it and switch to the browser and refresh the page and nothing happens so let's try to actually boot the server the dev server okay and right here we get a warning saying that the app there is experimental so uh, one thing I didn't mention is that at, at the moment it's still uh, experimental and in beta so this is why we need to add this experimental app tier app true to the next JS config so let's do that I'll open up the config and paste it in over here like this then I'll boot my server and looks like we got some errors saying that uh, there is conflicting app and page file so right now the home route is pointing to this page and this page is index.js file so let's get rid of this one so it should hit this page.js file so I remove that and I'll reboot my server okay and we got a message that uh, the app page did not have root layout so uh, Next.js created one for us so it created this layout.js file. Let's look into that in just a second but before that let's hop to the browser and see if everything works and looks like it does. We get the hello text over here. Okay so our page.js is working. So what is this layout.js? So with the new app folder we need to have this root layout inside of the app folder and what this does is this basically replaces the uh, app.js and document.js files so as you can see right here we have the html tags head and body and then we render the children inside of the body so every application should have inside of the app folder this root layout so let's add a navigation inside of this layout file just to see how it works. So I'll add some navigation code over here like this. So I added two links home and posts inside of the nav bar. So let's save it and switch to the browser and we can see we have home and posts over here. So if we click home it opens up the front page and with the posts it opens up the uh, slash posts page and we don't have it yet so let's create that one so in the app folder I will now create a new file inside of posts folder called page.js so with this new routing the segments in the URL so for example here the posts uh, will no longer come from a file name but rather from the folder names and each like folder should have a page file inside of it and that's the file that will be uh, rendered from that route. So now inside of this page file I'll just export a function like this and save it, switch back to the browser and we can see we have the post page over here so home goes to the home and posts go to the post. Let's change the uh, home page text just to home page like this. 
so over here now great now you can see when we click the links the page is refreshing and that's probably not what we want so we can replace these links with the uh, Next.js link component. So let's do that next. I'll go to the layout and replace these uh, A elements with the Next.js links. Like this, let's save it, switch to the browser. And now if I click the posts, I can see the page is not refreshing and only the uh, content down here is refreshed. So this nav bar is coming from the layout and when we switch between the pages, even though the URL over here changes, uh, this part here won't re-render because uh, it's defined in the layout and over here the children is changing. So based on the route, we are rendering either the uh, home page over here or the post page over here. And one new thing with the app folder is that we no longer need separate like components folder but we can add the components that we need inside of the app folder right where we need them. So for example we could move this navbar to its own component and just use it inside of this layout.js. So let's do that. So I'll add navbar and let's import it. So import navbar from and I will add it to the uh, same folder so let's import it from there like this then let's create the file or the component just like this and then export the function and then paste in the uh, navbar and let's save it and we still need to import the link like this so let's save it and we import it in in the layout we can get rid of that save it and switch the browser and refresh the page and looks like our page is working so as said we can place the components that we need inside the app folder too so next let's see how we can display some posts in the posts page so over here we want to download some posts from an api and display the titles for those. So let's start by adding a function that loads the posts and for this I will use a dummy API that returns just some random posts and I will call that API with fetch like this and then I will return post.json like this. And now comes the interesting part because normally in this situation we would use something uh, like get server side props or get static props. But with Next.js 13 and the latest React version, we can now import something called use from React. So let's do that like this. And if you have heard about React Suspense, well, this use over here, as far as I understood it, uh, is exactly that. So we can use this to fetch our data inside of our component. So how that works is let's go to our component and let's define a variable called posts and then call the use and give the get posts function as a parameter just like this and let's uh, log this like this save it and switch to the browser and go to the posts page let's actually open the console first so let's open the post page and in the browser console, we can't see anything. But if we switch back to the VS code, we can see that right here, we have some posts logged. So it looks like the request is working. But one thing you might be wondering is that why is this console log showing inside of the uh, server's terminal or server console instead of the browser console over here? And the answer for that is that this component is now running as a server component. And inside of the app folder, all components are by default server components. So this right here also is a server component and that's why it's logging the results inside of the server console. So now that we get our posts, let's just loop through them and display the titles like this. So I'll just display them as a list. And one thing I added was 
curly braces over here because it looked like the posts were coming as a post variable from the uh, API. But let's save this and switch to the browser. And inside of the post page, we can see we have three post titles over here as expected. So if we go to the home, we see the home page and inside the posts, we see the uh, post titles. One thing we should add over here is a loading indicator. And with this new app folder structure, we can do it pretty easily. So let's switch to the VS code and inside of the app folder, I will create a new file called loading. And inside of here, I just return a function. And from that function, I will just return text loading like this. So let's save this and go to the browser. Let's refresh the page. So now we are at the home page. And now when we click the posts page, it will trigger the API request and load the posts. And that will take a little time. So we should see a loading indicator over here. So let's try it out. As you can see, it displayed the component that we defined inside of the loading.js. So this is all thanks to this new app folder structure plus the new feature use from React. So this use automatically lets the other components know that, hey, we are loading data so we can that way display the loading indicator. At least that's how I understood it and that's how it seems to be working. So if I'm wrong, please do correct me in the comments. But as far as I know, that's how it works. So that easily we could add a loading indicator over there. Next, let's try to do it so that when we click one of these titles, it will display that posts details. So it will load that post from the API and display the details for that. In order to do that, let's add a link component over here like this. So what I did was add an XJS link component and the href is slash posts slash the post ID and I'm missing P from there like this. So we will use the post ID to identify which post we want to load. So let's save this and switch to the browser. And inside of here, let's refresh the page. And now if we click one of the blog posts, we get 404, but the URL points to the posts slash the posts ID. So that's good. So next, let's create this page over here. So in order to do that, we need to add a new folder. And because we are using dynamic routes right now, we want to name this folder like this. And inside of that folder, we will create a new file called page.js. And inside of the page, we will again return a function. And inside of this page, we can catch the ID from the page params. So let ID equals params.id like this. And let's just for now return a div displaying that ID like this. So our page is ready. Let's switch to the browser. And right here, we can see it displays the number over here. And if we click some other post, it will display that posts ID over here. Great. But what we actually want is to display that post under these titles. So let's hop to the code. And in order to accomplish that, we now need to define a new layout. So inside of this posts folder, we want to define a layout that has these titles and then has the blog post details displaying under here. So what we can do is actually just take this uh, page .js inside of the post folder and rename it as layout. And I will rename it over here also. And uh, every layout gets the children as props. And it should also render those children. So let's add it over here like this. So now if we save it, switch to the browser, we get 404 for the posts page. And that's actually because 
right now we only have the layout file inside of the posts folder. So what we still need is a page file inside of the posts folder. So let's add that and export a component from it like this. Let's save it. And now if I switch to the browser, we get the select a post text that we defined in the page.js. And now if we click one of these titles, it will display that ID under here. So our layout over here is now working. And the only thing to left to do is to actually display the blog post details inside of the ID and page.js. So over here. So let's do that next. And we can do it the same way we did it earlier by importing the use from React and then defining the function that fetches the data from the API and the API URL. So it's the dummyjson.com slash post slash then the ID of that post that we want to get the uh, data for. So then just return post.json like this. And inside of here, we can define the post variable and then use the use and pass in the get post and the ID as a parameter like this. And let's modify the return statement to uh, display the title and body of that blog post like this. Then I'll save it, switch to the browser. Let's see what happens. So we are getting an error and looks like we are missing S from the URL. So I think that was it. So let's save it, switch to the browser and yeah, now it's working. So if we go to the home page and then to the post page, we get the text, select the post. And when we select one, it will load that posts data under here and we can see different posts in there too, like this. So right here also, this top part over here is using that uh, layout that we defined and only this part over here is changing. So it makes it much more user-friendly this way and also more performant because we don't have to render and load all the other stuff also that has not been changed. So this was just a brief introduction for the new app folder and what you can do with it and with the layouts and server components. So I thought I keep this video uh, kind of short and don't go into too much details because there is bunch of stuff regarding the app uh, folder and the new routing system and the layouts and server components and all that stuff that just uh, pretty much can't cover in one video. So if you want to see more videos about this and want to see like a deep dive or me explaining the other things also, please let me know in the comments and I will make those videos too. But for this video, I thought I'd keep, keep this as kind of an introduction and just to get you started with the uh, layouts and the app folder and all that new stuff. If you want to learn more about Next.js, then watch this video somewhere over here. And also if you are new here and are not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below too.